The last of the wards is named after Justice Gerald Ledin. He was the Canadian Supreme Court Justice, who before he became the Justice, you know, in the United States, we had the uh, Schaefer Commission report, the breakthrough report appointed by President Nixon that came out with all sorts of recommendations that he really didn't want to hear. The same thing happened in Canada with Justice Ledin over a breakthrough report like the one in the U.S. that opened up a new dialogue back in the 1970s about drug policy. We give this award for accomplishment in the field of law, sometimes lawyers, sometimes activists, sometimes all sorts of people. Well, in this case, the award is going to go to the people that we thought were really among the most responsible for the victories in Colorado and Washington. So I'm going to ask Ira Glasser to come on up here and give these awards to Allison Holcomb, represented here by Pete Holmes, the city attorney of Washington, and to Brian and Mason and Steve Fox, who play such a key role in Colorado. Well, believe it or not, I'm going to be really brief and leave what time there is to the award winners to say what they want to say. And I'll let you read about their extensive biographies and experience in this field in the program, as Ethan suggested at the beginning. And if we ever find those uh, programs, we'll mail them out to you. Uh, but it's important to note that when something like these ballot initiatives get passed, it's never just due to two or three people, of course. It's due to many people. And many people deserve all kinds of credit for it. But in the end of the day, somebody has to write it, somebody has to run the campaign, and they have to do it right or the movement gets set back. It has to be written carefully, it has to be managed carefully, and above all, it has to be won. Because winning isn't everything, but losing isn't anything. And. Uh, these are the three people in Colorado, Steve and Mason uh, and Brian, who made the difference in writing the initiative, in managing and directing the campaign to get it passed. So please come up and accept this award if I can find it. Thank you, everyone. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you, Ira, for the introduction. Uh, thanks, DPA, for the award, of course, and a great conference, as always, the highlight of every two years. Um, it's really an, an honor to receive this award and, and have this recognized, um, and it's an especially uh, special honor to share it uh, with my two great friends and colleagues. Um, the Amendment 64 campaign uh, wasn't won overnight. Uh, it wasn't won in 2012 or 2011, uh, but this is something the, the three of us have worked on for eight years together, which is really amazing. Um, thank you. Um, Brian Vicente uh, started Sensible Colorado in 2004 with a grant from the Marijuana Policy Project and Peter Lewis, um, and for years, yeah and for years uh, stood up for the, the patients in the state and not just standing up for them but, but representing them in, in a legal, on the legal side and, and helped open up the entire industry that exists by helping to defeat an attempt by uh, Colorado State to limit caregivers to only serving five patients. Um, and by winning that, it opened up the ability for, for caregivers to serve as many patients as they could, which led to the development of the industry. So uh, that's incredible work by Brian and really set the stage for regulating for all adults. So let's hear it for Brian. <laughs> then my good friend Mason, um, who I showed someone the other night. I don't think you'll be able to see this from here, but this is my phone and uh, on the home screen, 
It's my two daughters, my wife, and Mason as my little four, <laughs> four speed dials. You can see it later if you want. Um, that's because we really spoke every day for about eight years um, working on the Safer campaign that, that uh, he and I founded with, with Aaron Houston uh, back in 2005. And as I suppose all you know, the whole purpose was to change the culture, help people understand marijuana is less harmful than alcohol and all that, and lay the groundwork for a time when marijuana could be made legal. Um, so long story short, uh, it worked out. And uh, Mason was the person, while I was sitting behind my desk comfortably, uh, Mason was doing every kind of stunt and petition drive and um, interview that, that came up. And uh, whether, whatever it was, you know, if we decided that he was going to challenge the, the mayor of Denver to a duel where he would smoke a, uh, have a puff of his joint for every beer that the mayor could chug, Mason, Mason was ready to do it and, and we got the media coverage we wanted. And, uh, and in the end, it, it, it all worked out. So let's, let's hear it for Mason. Uh, the, next, the next thank you, um, well, is actually making up for a mistake I made, and I'm glad I have an opportunity to make up for it. Uh, on election night, it was, it was a great, amazing party, amazing victory, and so on, as you can imagine. Uh, and at one point, we were able to go up and each uh, say a few words. Uh, it was the three of us, uh, along with Betty Aldworth. Uh, I don't know if she's here. Great spokeswoman for the campaign now, becoming executive director of SSDP. Will she, will she do great? So, and the other person was, was Rob Campia. And I was told beforehand, I was told beforehand that based on the order of speakers that I would introduce him. Uh, but I got all fired up during my speech, and then the next thing you know, I just you know said, and here's Rob, basically that. <laughs> so um, what I should have said then and felt bad about it for a long time, but can say now is that you know the three of us here um, are pretty hardworking, pretty smart, and so on. Can can figure a lot of things out and get a lot of things done. Um, but without Rob Campion and MPP we just would have been sitting around on our couches talking about making marijuana legal. Um, so I want to give a great amount of thanks to Rob um, because, you know, there was a time, well, basically MPP uh, put in 90% of the money for the campaign um, at a time when we didn't know if we could get the signature drive done or anything like that. And at a time when the polling wasn't incredibly high, he said, well, we're going to buy ads early because they're cheaper and, and put in a lot of money. Um, so really, uh, marijuana would not be legal in this state if it weren't for Rob. So let's hear it for Rob. So, yeah. Uh, finally, and with my time running out, I'd like to uh, dedicate the award, uh, or at least the third that I own. Um, oh, no, actually, we got three. I don't want to make it seem cheap. So I would like to dedicate my award uh, to my parents. I was... Uh, Brought up in a Jewish household, not really Jewish, we weren't kosher, we didn't go to synagogue or anything like that. Um, but they raised me to believe in the philosophy uh, captured by the phrase tikkun olam, uh, which means to repair or uh, heal or transform the world. And it is immensely gratifying to know that because of our work, uh, now any veteran in this state with PTSD can use marijuana. Um, any, any couple that wants to relax at night and, and have a great time can now do so. Um, any uh, person that wants to go to a Vicente Cedarberg party and have a great time can do so. And, and most satisfying is, is at this event, the number of international folks that are here from Uruguay, Mexico, uh, Colombia, Canada, elsewhere, are all here and seeing what's happening here and will bring it home and we truly will transform the world. So, tikkun olam. And the last award, the second stage of this award, uh, goes to Allison Holcomb, uh, who is the person who in Washington did what Mason and Steve and Brian did here. 
She was the primary author of and the primary director of the campaign for I-502. Uh, and without her and what she did, it wouldn't have happened. Um, again, I'll, I'll leave you to read her resume, but I do want to say one thing, that she is uh, the criminal justice director of the ACLU of Washington, for which I take some pride, but no credit, because she, she was hired in 2006, five years after I retired. And uh, although I must, I must tell you that it was not an accident that this happened in Washington. The ACLU of Washington uh, was the only affiliate of the ACLU, the only state affiliate in the entire country, which took to this issue like that, faster than anybody else. Uh, when Lauren Siegel and I were uh, first pushing this issue out of the National Office of the ACLU back in the late 80s uh, and tried to ignite our affiliate structure on the states to do this, the ACLU of Washington, under the direction of Kathleen Taylor, uh, uh, took to it uh, immediately and has always been a major force. Uh, Andy Coe uh, worked there for a long time. And uh, so Allison Holcomb uh, uh, was in the tradition. And uh, I wish she was here for me to uh, congratulate her personally. But here to accept the award is Pete Holmes, the city attorney uh, of Seattle, uh, and who can, who can congratulate her for us. Let's be honest, I'm not worthy to accept this award on behalf of Allison. Uh, she uh, is the brains as, uh, behind the, this uh, initiative, and she directed it, as Ira said. But you know, the, the fact that she can't be here tonight is a little bit of symmetry, uh, because Allison is traveling to approximately half a dozen countries in, in South America and Europe, helping them to undo the twisted prohibition policies in those countries. And the reason I say it's a bit of symmetry is because we exported this policy across the world, and now we're exporting Allison Holcomb to help undo it. As I said, Allison is a passionate, brilliant um, lawyer, and uh, she carried out this campaign and drafted this law while she was uh, also a uh, while she still is, of course, a wife and a mother to a, a, a four-year-old uh, boisterous boy throughout this campaign who became a fixture at a lot of the rallies. So, you know, as, uh, as Ira alluded to, um, Kathleen Taylor, who allowed Allison to go from ACLU into New Approach Washington, uh, thank God for powerful women like this to help, you know, right these wrongs. Thank you, Allison. You know, you got to love it when the chief prosecutor comes to accept the award on behalf of the leader of the legalization initiative. Is the world changing or what? Well, it's time to wrap it up. I'm so glad you all made it to Denver, for those of you who came from out of town. I look forward to seeing you all two years from now in Washington, D.C. Let's hope and pray that we have a whole, but that Uruguay legalizes next month, and Oregon, and Alaska, and others in the next year. Let's hope and pray that the number of people locked up in America has gone down by 100,000, if not more, in the next couple of years. Let's hope and pray that the number of people who get access to drug treatment or the help they need increases with Obamacare or whatever else is going to make it available to them. Let's hope and pray that leadership continues to emerge from the elites and that civil society and the grassroots keeps driving us forward. Let's see more presidents stepping up and more governors and senators beginning to open their mouths. Let's see our activism get more powered and more sophisticated. Because we are winning, but we got a long way to go. Have a great night. Stay safe. See you in a couple years. Bye-bye.